Hi, uh, today I'm going to show you how to do a victory roll and the reason for that is it's 75 years uh, since VE Day. Now in the 40s when this style was done it was all very utilitarian, it was all about keeping the hair up out the way because a lot of the women were actually working on machinery so they couldn't get their, their hair getting caught in the machines. Um, I'm doing a very simplified version. I'm going to start off by dividing the hair into four sections, two at the front and two at the back. Um, and it, I think you'll find it's just easy for you to do. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this side. I'm taking a section from the middle of the head down to just behind the ear. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip that out of the way so that the back doesn't get involved in this front and now I'm going to comb it up and back. Now part of the thing is with the 40s look it was quite narrow at the sides with some height on the top um, and sometimes some hair here either curly or straight. Um, we're going to do it as almost like a faux bob. So. I'm going to back brush this through the top and when you back brush what it does is it pushes the hair together and makes it into a fabric almost like a felt that you can then manipulate round quite easily. I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to spin this round and what you do is you back comb or back brush. I'm using a back brush um, because it's a bit softer, a bit more gentle, and I don't really want heavy teasing in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push against the hair and here through the side. I'm not doing the ends. And if you see that it's given it some body and also it's some springiness in there. So I'm literally now Instead of combing like I was then, I was pushing back on it. Now I'm just going to use this side of the brush and it just smooths out the hair a little bit. So any of those uh, excess back comb is removed. Do that on the edge and on the front edge. And what I'm going to do now is spin this round. Right, I'm going to bring this round again so you can see the shape I'm making. Now, when you put up hair, if you're doing it on someone else or on yourself, you hold the sections quite differently to when you're, or from a hairdresser point of view, when you're cutting it. When a hairdresser cuts the hair, they use straight fingers. We're going to use curved fingers, and the curved fingers help to get the shape. So I'm just combing that back and then I start to twist the hair. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, setting pins to actually hold the hair in place while I'm doing it and what I do is just push that in. Now these aren't going to stay in but they actually hold the hair in place while we we actually do it to make the shape. And this gives you some time to move the hair and make it kind of a perfect shape for what you want. Okay, so now with my roll, I'm going to form that around my fingers. Smooth out those ends. through. So it's all quite gentle and I'm using the end of my brush just to get those little hairs in. ends in. I'm going to use another setting pin. Now 
Now, no hairspray yet and no permanent pins because what I want to do is make sure that the whole thing is working as a whole piece before I kind of make that final decision. Okay, take the clip out the back and we'll work onto the other side. So now onto the other side. Again, taking the section from the same part of the head to the back of the ear. And I'm just doing the reverse of what I did the other side. So let's get that out of the way. Looking for the shape of the ear. So this bit here gets tucked out of the way. And now exactly the same, pulling it forward, up, and now back combing or back brushing, I should say, in that hair there, not through to the ends. And then smoothing out. Any of those bits by using your brush as say using a smoothing kind of action so you're not going deep into the hair you're just going over the surface now I'm gonna put my thumb in there and twist it round and up and again again I'm gonna use the pins just to help do that So you kind of go in and hold it back. And let's get this hair smoothed out on those ends. Wrap it around my fingers and pop it inside my roll. So this is why I kind of say you shouldn't secure it or hairspray it until you know exactly where it's going to go. I want to get those rolls so they come up like that. Just going to put another pin in here and then I can show you properly what I'm doing. I'm going to place another pin in here just to hold that while I'm doing the back. I say I'm not doing anything so it's permanent so we can move it around and manipulate it a little bit while we're doing it. So now starting through the back, I say this is four sections so I'm just going to lift that up a fraction. I'm going to take a zigzag section through the back so zigzagging down and the reason I'm doing that is I don't really want a parting to be seen there so let me just clip that out of the way and so I'm just going to take the whole section what I did before I started doing the hair I did prep it with um, some ample angora, Shumura ample angora, and I also use some night serum on it um, underneath, and the two together kind of work very well because one gives that great kind of shine and gives it a bit of weight, and the other gives gives the hold, so it gives something to grip. Um, and when you're doing hair up, you need a little bit of grip in the hair, so you can, if you're using say. People always talk about dirty hair and if you should kind of go to, if you're having a hair put up, should it be a day old or whatever? And yes, you can. And very often when new, people come in with um, dirty hair, we'll use a dry shampoo. Uh, we use the Color Lustre uh, dry uh, shampoo. And that actually is very soft. It cleans the hair, but it makes it have a little bit of airiness. Um, but I say, as this was clean hair, I didn't have to do that. So now I'm just back brushing up underneath again. Again, that makes it hold together. OK, 
going over that top layer to get any bits out. And I say I'm going to make like a faux bob. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a band on here. And the band just makes it easier to put the hair up and for it to stay. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Okay, so they're both at the same length, the same place in the hair. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put those together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these, roll these up inside the hair. So it's going to be inside here. These two are going to go up to the hairline. And I'm then going to put a pin into the hairline and in behind the, the uh, band. And then it becomes really secure. Right, let me just do that. Now I'm pulling that over so that it joins up and we get a continuous look of a faux bob. Now when you put a grip in, a pin, there's two ways. Um, you can either put it in that way. Now, if you put it in that way, the only problem is if you use it on the surface here, very often you get the bobble stick up. So I always do it the opposite way. So that almost, that bit that sticks out acts like a plow. And when you push it into the hair, it'll hold it and it digs in deeper into the root. On the underneath, you're not gonna see it anyway. So I'm putting it in the other way. And what I'm doing is just aiming that up and crossing over explain to you. So what I'm doing, the one grips in there already, like that, and I'm actually crossing it over. And by crossing it over like that, it locks it, and so it holds it really firmly. Do the same to the other side. Now, very often people on this type of colour hair, they'll want to use blonde grips. I think it's best using dark ones because they're going to go into the shadow so they're not going to be um, out on show. What I'm doing is I'm pushing the grip in, you see it goes in and then I turn it back on itself and go down. Ooh. So it's not on show and it's just showing. I can now take that one out. Same again. So I'm going to pull it down so you can see inside the roll and I'm now going to grip inside the roll and secure that in place. in to hold the, the roll. So now just to finish off, I'm going to pull this forward before I finish it off totally. And I'm going to put a clip in there.
And what I'm doing is I'm just pulling it in just to give it a little bit more shape through this back. So it gives you that kind of head hugging and then the roll. Um, before I put hairspray on, I'm going to actually use a bit of wax and I'm using shape paste, Shumura shape paste. I'm going to just take a little bit on my finger and it may seem a bit strange to be doing this, but it's much better than hairspray for doing those little flyaway bits to start with. the final spray I'm using sheer lacquer by Shuomura and the reason I'm using that is quite a, a dry lacquer and I know that everyone has a favorite um, hairspray they use uh, but all hairsprays have a slightly different quality and I think you have to work on what quality you want so that you get the right one for that particular use um, I say this is quite a dry one so it's quite good for when you've got the hair in place and you know it's kind of exactly what you want it'll hold it I'm going to do again round here I'm going to then allow it to dry then I'll take the clips out and by then what will happen is it should he said hopefully um, keep the hair exactly in place Okay, so there we go. My victory roll for VE Day. I hope you get on with it okay. Let me know. Speak to you soon.